you may be at the point of looking at adding feedback to your mechanics in order to make it more precise or to capture some of the errors I discussed last episode in episode 19. But you may also be wondering about some of the problems it can cause, and there's two things that I mentioned in the last episode. One was that it can make your electronics more sophisticated, therefore more expensive. The other one is that the feedback devices may not be as accurate as you think. So I'm going to talk about linear encoders today just to give you an idea of some of the things to be aware of. First, I have a poll question for you to answer up here, which is, do linear encoders solve more problems than they call, cause, or do they cause more problems than they solve? Or are you still wondering what a linear encoder is? Check out the poll. I'm kind of curious. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Let's learn things. Again, last episode I discussed uh, different types of linear encoders. There's optical, magnetic, inductive, and they each have their pros and cons. They also specify things differently. The question here is, does a linear encoder solve drivetrain accuracy? Hmm. You would think yes, and it may. The linear encoders take the need for high accuracy drivetrain elements such as ground ball screws away. Okay. However, the linear encoder performance must be accounted for. Linearity compared to accuracy. Some encoders specify linearity, other ones specify accuracy. And the point of measurement and where you're measuring can really also matter as well because then the angular errors come into play. So linearity is usually specified for steel or magnetic strip encoders. And there is no accuracy of the scale, only the linearity or the variation from the straight line. The advantage of these type of encoders, as I mentioned last episode, is the cost, the ease of installation, and the robustness for different environments. If we look at this linearity example over half of a meter, 500 millimeters, the position error goes up and so even though the accuracy is not specified, in this case it's 20 microns, but the linearity is specified and that's plus or three microns, this example. That can be easily uh, corrected with some slope correction in the electronics. But then you have glass scales types that have a true accuracy and the scale specification is actually called accuracy. The advantages of these types of encoders is the precision, the thermal stability, they might be a little more expensive, but they are more precise. If you look at these, there's no linear uh, increase of the accuracy over the half a meter, but we do have an accuracy specified, and it's only plus or minus three microns for this one. Then there are subdivisional errors, and this is where the signal error that occurs within one signal period of the encoder, and the period is based on the lines or the magnetic pull pitch of the encoder. And the most common signal periods are 20 microns for the optical encoders and 2 to 5 millimeters for magnetic. The typical SDE is plus or minus 1% of the signal period, which is 0.2 microns or 200 nanometers for the optical or 20 microns for the magnetic. This can be improved with finer signal periods or by the uh, correctional electronics in the encoder itself. So if we look at this example, if we have a three second move here at 40 microns per second, you can see the period of the error. Now this is scale here is in millimeters, so this is 0.1 microns here. That's 0.1 microns, and this is for the standard 20 micron pitch encoder. If we apply the same thing with some correctional electronics, we can cut this 0.1 just about in half for the same encoder. So how does the SDE affect your application? If you're scanning at slow speeds, it causes some velocity variation or also known as velocity ripple. It can also cause some position triggering, triggering errors. And depending upon the scale and magnitude of the SDE, it can cause some audible noise in the application. If you like what you're learning and want to learn more, be sure to follow my hashtag motion control show and check out this link here. I'm Corey Foster at Valen Corporation. I hope this helps.